do we uh, encapsulate the success or failure of, of the era of Merkel? Good morning to you, my friend. Yeah, good, good morning, Steve. Well, I was listening to what Anita says, and, and of course, it is right that private equity has been something of a, a bad word in Germany. It still is in lots of circles. I don't think things have changed that much. Mr. Mutterfering, of course, has retired to the great uh, wall in the sky. I mean, he unfortunately died a few years ago, but there's still a lot of antipathy towards private equity, uh, particularly amongst the Greens. So this is without any doubt, they're not giving them the whole country, as Anetta says. And I think there will be difficulties in setting up these private-public partnerships. Don't forget Mr Steinbrook, when he was the finance minister under one of the former Grand Coalitions, he also wanted to bring in lots of public-private partnerships. And I remember the coalition agreement then did mention all these words. They actually had more English words in the uh, Steinbrook era than there are now. So we have been here before, and I think there'll be all kinds of rather awkward compromises. But as you said, Steve, they're trying to do everything. They're trying to keep the debt break, and yet launch this immense program. And there's going to be tensions and spills and strains along the way. It's not going to be an easy ride uh, at all. I think they've done the easy part in a way. It, they've only taken a couple of months to get this coalition uh, done. Uh, that's much better, as you know, than what happened in 2018, when it took nearly six months to get the coalition agreed. This is a, an unusual coalition, three-party coalition. Uh, they've done this very well, but I think the clock starts ticking when Mr. Schultz is elected as Chancellor, which will take place in, in just a couple of weeks' time. Then people will be expecting this honeymoon, 100 days or whatever it is. They'll be expecting some quick action in that time, and there's bound to be disagreements and disappointments along the way. Yeah, I, I just don't see how um, some of the economic and energy um, aspirations are going to fit in, i.e. you've got a vast amount of coal still, albeit with aspirations to get rid of coal uh, by the end of this decade in some way, shape or form. You've got a vast amount of gas and going to be a far more gas as well coming in, albeit of aspirations 10 years after that to uh, lessen that flow aggressively as well. But you've got this security aspect, which Annette was very careful to mention security two or three times uh, in that report just now as well. Again, I don't see how the Greens can hang on in there uh, if indeed some of these um, issues become compromises in the very near future. Well, it is going to be difficult for the Greens, and there's been quite a number of newspaper articles pointing out that they, they are their backs are now to the wall. If the Greens don't deliver on these promises and do well in the next four years, then there's a strong chance that they will be not just out of government, maybe even out of parliament, because this is really for the first time they're stepping up to the plate as a major coalition partner. They were very much the junior partner when we had the uh, Joska Fischer as foreign minister under Gerhard Schröder at the beginning of the decade. This time, they're really taking over some very powerful ministries. If you take something, Steve, which you mentioned, coal, uh, they're still really rather pussyfooting around this because th their aim is to get rid of the lignite plants, ideally, they say, by 2030. Anybody who knows anything about energy knows that they can't just get rid of the lignite plants because they're shutting down the nuclear plants. Uh, the last ones go off the grid. Uh, in the next few months, and they do need this baseload electricity, which Lignite at the moment produces. And that's why they've simply said, ideally by 2030, that's a little weasel world in the coalition that's bound to lead to some strife with the Greens. Now, gas is really interesting. There's a lot of stuff in the coalition agreement about building gas-fired power stations and making them also dual capability, so they can also be switched to taking hydrogen as a fuel in the next 10 or 15 years. Uh, the Greens are not going very keen on gas. A lot of it comes from Russia, this pipeline, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. That's going to be coming on stream, even though it's not been approved. That's going to be a big area where there will be strains and tensions with the coalition. But also take this target, 80% of the electricity should be done through renewable means by the year 2030, from 50% at the moment. Lots of experts in this field think David. that Germany, a country with its engineering and financial capability, should have put into place by now 80% renewable generation of electricity. In fact, it's not, it's 50%. One of the major failures of the Merkel government has been that the renewable capability has not come on stream as quickly as it should have done. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is not actually financing, there's plenty of money around, is actually that all the different uh, approval processes up and down the country. The Greens may be very much in favour of all these renewable plants at a 
big um, national level, but when it comes to the local planning procedures, it's extremely difficult. And speedy, all these things, are, it's not something a finance minister can just lift his hand and wave a magic wand. All these things have to go through very laborious local processes. So that's where all the detail will come in, and that's where the problems will lie, at the local planning level. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.